because of the fact that it's blind, I can't see what he's doing, very traumatic. In this position, instead of the previous lesson where we went low, to scoot our way out, this time we're going to go high up. I'm going to shoot my hands up, my chin comes down, my hands reach inside his arms, I hang heavy. His arm draping over my neck is showing me the way out, Sam. The side his hands are locked to is my path out. Does that make sense, Reed? Going this way would go deeper into the choking arm and make the strangle easier. I hang heavy and I want to get as wide as I can and go as high up as I can until Mike is going to barf up his skeleton and be paper thin. From this position, I plant the feet, I drive up into him, and I widen my base until I'm so high above Mike that even if I let go and he did the rear choke, It would be very, very hard for him to do an effective choke with that much weight. And it's only at the very, very end with all the juice in his arms that I actually even feel the choke effect. So it's not something we do live to show off, but it's understanding the leverage, the weight distribution of balance is so important on this. So we start again, hang heavy, chin down, feet wide, bridge all the way up. Now we'll start circling to the side the hands are locked on. Watch what happens to his hooks. They're even, they're congruent. Now I start to circle, I start to step. Not so even, not so congruent. I step over, and if Mike's good, he's gonna attempt to get on top, and that's great, because I'm gonna push myself to my half guard position, get my underhook on him, pop up to here. So this doesn't look that great for me, except for the fact that now, at this angle, I have the underhook, Mike is a headlock position, Chantal, what do we know about headlocks? No headlocks. We don't want them in our life because they can only disappoint us. So we don't want to hold just the head. If I get a hold of someone's head, that's not you know, terrible, but I can't rely on that in lieu of solid underhook control. So me getting a half guard bottom, getting the underhook. As long as I push his leg like a conveyor belt, into my half guard, he gets my head, I'm just treating that as a liability. Switch out so Mike can see. Does anyone have any questions so far? So Garcia's got one. This is a death grip to another dimension. <laughs> this is just the same side for their consistency. Or maybe I don't know how to escape the other one. From this position. This is the side of hands locked. This is my path. But I can't just roll with a barrel. He'll choke me even to the weaker side. Chin down. Hang heavy from this position. I just need to buy myself enough time. I want to get super high until Sam feels suffocated. Wide feet make it easier to balance. And there's not much he's going to do to stop this pressure. Now I walk, 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 walk until I feel his legs pry apart. If I don't do anything, Sam might start moving. So I need to push him into my half guard and slide my back to the mat. Sam jumps on top. I get my underhook, and now with the half guard underhook position, I can go the whole game off this, or if I just want to be simple, I lock my scorpion, chop his arm, and roll him through. And I do that on everybody. It's very easy, doesn't require any amazing athleticism or speed, but you have to understand the underhook versus headlocking. As scary as a cobra is, most of the time betting on the mongoose, even if it doesn't look that impressive, is the smarter move. Chop, roll the person, they don't headlock you, you have an underhook half guard game. Does anyone have any questions? Anyone want to see it done again? One more time. Can I have